Hello and welcome to Punts and Bunts. My name is Jose. I'm here with Robbie and Sean. How are you guys doing? Uh, doing all right over here. How about you, Sean? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, I think today we should discuss cryptocurrencies. It's, uh, there's been some headlines about young athletes uh, getting into cryptocurrency, and I was wondering what your guys' thoughts on that was. So uh, I guess from here, I'll go with, uh, I mean, as, as, a, as a crypto investor myself, I, uh, I do uh, follow the markets pretty closely. Uh, however, I do have to say it, uh, it definitely, it's definitely a lot more volatile of a market than your prototypical uh, stock market or even a Forex market. Um, so I could see how players could lose a lot of money on it. But I think like any other market, at some point it will bounce back. But who's to say if or when? So but. just back backing up, uh, we've seen the trend of young athletes or just athletes in general um, deciding to put signing bonuses uh, or just parts of their contract into the crypto market. And because of the latest crash, these guys are losing what was normally guaranteed money uh, right up front, right? That's basically what's going on. Yeah, I think the, the latest headline name was uh, Trevor Lawrence. Um, I think it was his entire signing bonus from what I read of $24 million invested into Bitcoin and a few others. And with the latest crash, I think they value that investment now uh, just under $9 million. So a loss of about $15 million. Um, and of course, for an athlete, somebody who there's, their career is going to be three or four multi-million dollar contracts that may seem small, but it's, I wonder if that will kind of dissuade other athletes from kind of going that trend. It doesn't probably seem as, like I said, surefire way to make extra money or, or increase your money. Um, I wonder if we're going to see a decrease in athletes kind of doing this. Because from what I can see, it spans all athletes, NBA, NFL. I haven't seen a whole lot of MLB, but I think in the MLB, there's, you know, the, the range of contract values probably prohibits a lot of players from doing that. Where in the NFL, almost everybody there has a million dollar contract, which probably leads them to a little bit more of that aggressive investing. And Robbie, uh, I know that you were one of the first guys that I knew that was that really got into the crypto market. You know, like uh, I remember you bringing it up when we'd go to the batting cages and it was just kind of a thing that. I guess I just didn't really understand or I didn't really take the time to understand. And then of course we saw the big boom, what within the last 12 months um, and you've done pretty well yourself, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, I'm not like obviously still working nine to five, but I mean, it's uh, right. yeah, definitely uh, definitely a good little, uh, little side hustle except for right now. Um, but uh, I have to say that uh, I've been in about since, in and out of it ultimately since about 2017 right before the first initial big boom when uh it first broke 10,000 bitcoin that is um and uh it seems to almost always go in two to three year swings so i think if you see more players investing in it they would start doing it about a time like right now when it's at this low point uh this this low point so you can buy in the dip and hopefully it'll it'll spike back up here come about 2024 um and we'd see uh if uh, what would happen then, and I mean, you, you never know. I mean, it, it's it's such a volatile market. It's more, like I said before, way more volatile than your your stocks, your forex, or even your uh, your precious metals. So, so let me ask you, because you've been doing it for as long as you have been, and and out of you know our group here, you're certainly the most uh, seasoned at understanding how it all works. Would you still feel comfortable enough to take three paychecks and just put it right into? one of those cryptocurrencies i mean like seeing like what some of these athletes are doing you know they're they're putting you know tens of millions of dollars on the far high end but still they're putting you know six seven figures into cryptocurrency which even to them it eventually has to be a big number if it's early in your career and that's you know your signing bonus but as somebody who's done it would you ever feel comfortable putting that much into it at any one time uh yes and no i think that's kind of an open-ended question there uh just because i look at it and sometimes I think like, but I mean, like right now, I think I'd be more comfortable buying in than if it were still, if Bitcoin were still at 60 K um, just cause at this point it's, it's so much lower. I think it's, I, I personally, from what I've been reading and what I see, I think it's only going to go up from where it's at. It hasn't gotten much lower than it is right now. Um, so I think, uh, I think we're going to see it spike back up. Like I said, 
give it another year and a half to two years. But I ab- absolutely right now, I'd consider putting not not necessarily a substantial, not necessarily like three paychecks worth of money, but uh, definitely would still consider buying and putting more into it now than I was, say, uh, 12 months ago when Bitcoin was nearly 60K. I have a front office sports article right here that uh, talks about not just Trevor Lawrence, but also guys like uh, New York Giants running back Saquon Barkley. Um, it says that, according to them, that his $10 million invest in, investment uh, could be now as low as $4.1 million. Uh, that's a f- good chunk of change just going <laughs> down. I mean, it, it's high risk, high reward, right? And it's always been that way. And it's if you're doing it, uh, if you're deciding to put your money into the crypto, I mean, just because it was going good for a while there, you you should know that that's always a possibility. A- right? Absolutely. And I mean, the, the thing is, and it, it goes different ways. Like, I mean, for all you know, it could be like our uh, our buddy that we know who decided to have $50 worth of Bitcoin in 2011 and then cash out thinking it was going to go nowhere. And now he just doesn't do anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's it, but that's the same thing as like, he, he's just like, oh, it's not really something I think it's going to go anywhere. So he pulled out and yeah, if he had sat on that for 10 years, yeah, he'd have been a uh, very wealthy man, not talking to us. So do you think it's really worth like putting into that as opposed to other like investment savings opportunities, like as in stocks or CDs or other stuff like that? Like I, I, I get like Jose said, it's a you know high risk, high reward, but for these guys planning for their future, I would almost feel like it'd just be better off doing something that's a proven and insured to a certain degree, you know, saving setup rather than something that is as volatile. And I mean, Bitcoin is as about imaginary as money gets. I mean, there's always the debate of how real money really is. When you look at your bank, it's just numbers, but you know, there's, there's at least the, the facade that there's something backing it and giving it value where with crypto, I mean, there's, there's nothing. And, and the market seems to be swayed more based off of just emotion or how th- people are feeling about the value rather than like an intrinsic, like this business just acquired that business. So their stock is going to go up. You know, I, I, I get the, the attraction, you know, with especially how the market had grown the past few years. But I just feel like if you're really trying to plan for your future like that, like, I don't know that I would want to risk that much kind of money, you know, for an athlete, you know, their career can be over the next play, you know, Mm -hmm. the next at bat, the next down, they can be done. And, and to put it in something that volatile seems really risky for somebody who's, whose paycheck depends on their body, which could be like, so the next, the next game could be done. You know, Saquon Barkley, for example, was the best running back his first couple of years and injuries and stuff have really caught up with him, he's probably not going to get that next giant multi-million dollar contract that they thought he was. And now that loss in money in crypto probably hurts a little bit more knowing he's not in line to get, you know, some huge new contract in a couple of years as where it looked when he probably made some of those investments. Absolutely. But I mean, like, like I said before, I think it's going to bounce back at some point. And uh, I mean, it, it's a pump and dump in a lot of cases, like the whole Dogecoin thing, you had Elon jumping out in the world and, you know, Dogecoin to the moon and people are jumping on that, that, that turned way less than a penny. And that got as high as like 74, 75 cents. That made a lot of like 18 to 20 year olds, millionaires, even some billionaires. Um, It's and now I think it's down back to like six cents is what I I saw last. So it's dropped quite a bit, but it's, I mean, I'm not trying to digress too far, but I mean, it's kind of even almost in some ways compared to like the, uh, like just how the the big GameStop thing happened last year where one guy on Reddit went nuts and said, oh, everyone's got to get in on this, get in on this. And then everyone gets in on it, jacks the price up from where it was, you know, in the below, I think it was even below 100 bucks, and it just got well over 200. So. And, and like Robbie, you just said not to digress, but um, <laughs> just the fact that it can be a, like what, what you just said, a pump and dump, doesn't that just go to show that it, can kind of be a scam like there 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 are records of people like jake paul with dink doink i don't know if you guys know any about that anything about that but he made his own crypto coin basically marketed it to his fans 
only to then like rug pull once he had enough people on there and like cash out and then tank the coin himself. So like stuff like that, obviously Bitcoin is a whole different thing, but like I guess you just brought up the Dogecoin thing and with uh, Elon and all that stuff. But um, yeah, so I mean, it's de- definitely, it's definitely a concern. I mean, there was a whole thing about right. you guys reading about it with the, um, the squid games token that was created. It was put onto uh, one of the uh, exchanges, like uh, the, decentralized exchanges like a pancake swap and people were jumping out like oh gotta love squid games squid games is great let me just get these tokens and all of a sudden it just disappeared it was gone it never really existed so people had spent thousands of dollars on this and it was gone so yes absolutely and but i think i think a lot of these athletes are smart enough to realize that they they don't mess around with altcoins they stick with the the bitcoin the ethereum the litecoin um, just to try and keep something that generally has a little bit more of stability uh, compared to some of these other altcoins out there. Right. And I, I'm looking right here at that same article and, you know, it's not, it just states that it's not a hundred percent disclosed how much exactly these athletes and, you know, we'll, we'll never know exactly how much they were putting in. We just know that they put some in fair amount, more money than I'll ever have in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and lost more money than I will ever have in my life. Don't so, sell yourself short, Jose. I mean, we'll see. But you're you're the you're the head of the Punks and Bucks <laughs> podcast. Don't sell no, yourself short. No way. <laughs> um, all right. Well, um, I guess but, we'll 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 go off to Robbie. We're gonna start this new segment uh, where Robbie, Robbie, since we've known him since we were 13 years old, he was always the dude that would come up to you. And tell you just a random, the most random sports fact, statistic, whatever you want to call it. So we're like, why not just add that into this podcast uh, as a way to sign off every episode? So for the first time, episode six, um, here we go with Robbie's fun fact. We might come up with a better name later, but for now, it's just (laughs) Robbie's fun fact. Go for it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as, uh, we all, we all, all, uh, excuse me, we're all familiar with, uh, with stolen bases and strikeouts, um, obviously as baseball fans. So there have been 13 players throughout MLB's history that have had 500 stolen bases and less than 500 strikeouts. 12 of those players were born that before 1860, basically, you know, predating the civil war, predating born born predating what we know as major league baseball so not even like your boy ty cobb not even my boy ty cobb all right georgia peach boy (laughs) (laughs) uh but like i said 12 of those 13 players born prior to 1860 so before abe lincoln was shot um before the civil war that's just all all that stuff is that crazy to think that there was baseball during then or what was then baseball yeah, it, it was baseball. There was a space between it. Uh, anyways, not to, again, not to digress, but the uh, <laughs> the uh, the one other player is the well traveled, ultimately a fan favorite as the game went around in Juan Pierre. So I guess you could say he was the Juan player. <laughs> I'll, I'll also make I make a lot of bad jokes, so there's that too. Um, but yeah, so Juan Pierre and uh, as we all remember him when he was on the Cubs back in the 06 season, fun to watch, great defender, uh, always knew how to put the bat on the ball, and dude could run. He, he could just run real, real, real fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but he wasn't right no just uh, what's that dude's name? A uh, Gore. Dude has three Terrence rings. Gore, Terrence yep. Gore. He was he wasn't just a Terrence Gore who's just super fast and was just on the team because he was fast, but the <laughs> dude could put the bat on the ball like no I, other dude. When I, whenever I played any sort of uh, baseball video game, I would always like to have Juan Pierre on my team. As these two guys here know, I, I like to build my teams around speed, um, probably because it's something I've never had, um, <laughs> but uh, just. I, I like, you know, I, I like to bunt and play small ball. Best kind of baseball, small ball, in my opinion. Chicks dig the sack bunt is a very, uh, very common phrase I like to use. So, all right. So, with that, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever heard of it. Uh, but with Ro- that being Robbie's first fun fact, that's how we're going to sign off. Make sure you uh, follow us on all the social medias, Instagram. 
Twitter, obviously here on YouTube, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, we're going to start getting back on the train with this show. Uh, we had a couple vacations that delayed some stuff. I was finishing up some stuff with school, but now it's summer, baby. And uh, we're going to be back into it. All right. See ya.